Well, I'm Michael Marquardt, and welcome to Gospel Tangents. Welcome to Gospel Tangents, the best source for Mormon history, science, and theology. I'm Rick Bennett. We're continuing our conversation with historian Michael Marquardt. We're going to try to identify who the original six church members were that organized the church on April 6, 1830. So Michael has some pretty good guesses on that. And so we're going to talk about who likely was there. And uh, so it's going to be a fun conversation. I'd also like to encourage you to please subscribe on our website. Go to gospeltangents.com and then click the yellow subscribe button. And uh, if you do that, I will be able to send you a transcript of this interview and future transcripts for just $10 a month. So please help support Gospel Tangents and help make this a wonderful history resources for lots of people. Now back to our conversation. You, so you said we have pretty good records of the people who were baptized April 6th in Manchester. Do we know who those people were? Yes, well, the earliest we have, uh, because these, if they're men, of course, they would be ordained uh, to an office in the, in the church, mm -hmm. elder, priest, teacher. Um, and so, since there was no minutes and no other church record, even though they were supposed to keep records, we don't have that. Um, and so we have the, the manuscript history of the church mentions um, Joseph Smith Sr. And it also mentions Lucy Max Smith. And those are Joseph Smith's father Harris. and mother. Okay. Yeah. It mentions Martin Harris. Okay. And uh, it didn't have the first name, but the last name was Rockwell. So we Porter Rockwell probably? Um, no. No? No. Oh, really? It was pretty close. It was, it was his mother, but they're taking these notes. If you look at the notes, there are a lot of cross-outs, um, uh -huh. pretty bad shape. There's even notes at the bottom that some of this may have happened two or three d days later. Oh. And that was recopied into the uh, bound manuscript history. Okay. So we still have uh, Joseph Sr. and Lucy Smith, uh -huh. Martin Harris, and I have A. Rockwell, A. Blank Space Rockwell. Okay. Um, and you think that was Porter's mother? Yeah, over a period of time, because there's other indications that that was who it was. But, okay. But at the time, if there was no records, you wouldn't know. And we're certain that Joseph Smith Sr. was baptized then because Joseph, Joseph Jr., mm -hmm. he was so excited to have his father uh, being baptized. And his mother, Lucy, mentions that in her uh, recollections. And then also we do have a recollection of Joseph Knight Sr., and he was the one who tr who uh, traveled to Manchester and was there at the, and witnessed the baptism of Joseph Sr. and told how Joseph was very excited, um, as you know, as a son would be crying and everything, mm -hmm. of, of the joy of having his father baptized. Okay, so those four seem pretty solid then. So, they seem pretty solid to me. Okay. Was Joseph and Oliver, were they re Because I know they were baptized in 1829, right? Yes. So were they rebaptized? Is there any indication they were rebaptized on that day for the there's, organization? There's no indication that they were rebaptized. One baptism was good enough. So if we go with the number six, uh, could it be those four plus Oliver and Joseph as the original six? Yeah, even though there wasn't a list, there was. Uh, well, we, first we have the revelations, mm -hmm. and there was uh, six revelations, um, and one of them, of course, was for Joseph uh, Smith Sr., mm -hmm. um, Samuel Smith, there's Hiram Smith, of course, Joseph Smith himself, um, and, uh, I mean, could it have been more than six then? Because Samuel and Hiram, we haven't talked about them yet as far as the first day. Yeah, we, we don't know, you know how many were there. We do know that there are you know, people who witnessed the baptisms, 
but we don't know who was actually in the uh, in the log home. Okay, so there could have been a lot more than six. So Hiram, Samuel, uh, I think you said Newell. Um, well, uh, Joseph Knight Sr. was there, but, Knight. but he was not baptized at that time. But he got a revelation mm -hmm. that he should join the, the true church, and he wanted to read the Book of Mormon. Okay. So, and the location of that, that log home was in Manchester. Now, where was, where was Joseph, Joseph Jr., I'll specify, living at, in, on April 6, 1830, do we know? Was it Manchester and not Fayette? Well, he had traveled up from, uh, from the Harmony area where he was. Joseph Knight Sr. Oh, because he translated up. the Book of Mormon in Harmony. We well, did Harmony and Fayette, okay. two locations, but this is in 1830, and he traveled up with Joseph Knight Sr., and that his recollections was were uh, written down uh, prior to his death in 1847. So that's the only reason we would know that he even took him up there, and, and they drove up to Manchester, and they saw Martin Harris, uh, Joseph Smith said that there's Martin with a bunch of Mormon books. And so um, that, that indicated it was, you know, at the latter part of March 1830. And uh, Martin Harris stayed overnight that night and he was uh, said not too many people were interested in purchasing the book, mm -hmm. but he was there, and he also said he must have a commandment, and that there is a commandment uh, for Martin Harris in March 1830. And uh, since you mentioned the Joseph Smith papers, they they want to date that to the summer of 1829. So even at this late date, they, people have been changing the early uh, ideas and revelations and, and dates. And so, yeah, we have a problem that you know, people are saying it's organizing Fayette. Well, the reason it was, was, was a financial reason to protect the church, which is understandable. But as we look back, we can you know, see that it was not actually organized in Fayette. Okay, so let me make sure I'm, I'm following you there. So, April 6th, we have some sort of a church meeting. We've got an unknown number of people there. Um, and they don't file any paperwork, as far as we can tell, to, to organize the church in April mm -hmm. of 1830. So the first paperwork that's filed is in 1833, when they change the name to the Church of the Latter-day Saints, and then they say it's Fayette. Is, is that correct? Am I saying that correct? Well, there was no, uh, evidently there was no incorporation that we know of in Ohio. There was a possibility, but I don't know of any document that says that. They were incorporated in Illinois, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, the church today as a body is an unincorporated body of believers, just as originally the Church of Christ. So um, things have you know things have changed. Um, wow, this is getting complicated. Yeah, because so I thought I, I know I, I listened to a podcast with uh, I want to say his name is Darren Smith. Is that his name? Book of Mammon. Is that the guy? Um, he didn't he say that the, 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 the church is a corporation soul? Well, there's two, there's two uh, Utah corporations. One's a corporation of the presiding bishop right. who would um, mainly hold property, and that's a corporation soul. Okay. And the other one uh, done years later is corporation of the president of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Corporation soul. So they're both corporations. Yes. Yeah, they're both corporations uh, under the law of the state of of Utah. Okay. So okay, so April 6, eighteen thirty. There's no corporation. 
but the church has some sort of debts, or Joseph Smith has debts, or something, so they decide to change the name. Well, the United Firm had uh, debts because they have, uh, you know, different things that they borrowed money from, and they owed money. There was different dates, and they're also borrowing money from church members to meet those, uh, whatever uh, arrangements have been made. Mm-hmm. Um, and also the revelations mentioned. So this United yeah. Firm, was this like a, an incorporation sort of a document then? or No, it was just uh, members of the uh, high priest. Uh, some of them were also uh, a member of the what they call literary firm in charge of publications, for example, the uh, scriptures. Um, so, for example, we haven't talked about the Book of Commandments, but that was something that was done even prior to that. Yeah. But there's a lot of things going on, but it's also mentioned in letters and everything that there's, uh, you know, pretty debt ridden at that time. So, okay, so there's no official documents. Joseph Smith is just kind of freewheeling, doing the best he can with his finances. He asks Martin to pay for the Book of Mormon. Martin mortgages his farm <laughs> and then loses his farm. Um, so essentially we've got all of these, and then Book of Commandments, because they, they started a printing press. I mean, essentially they were trying to, you know, and I know Sidney Rigdon was the one who kind of introduced um, consecration among the saints. So you said there was this united firm, which is a group of high priests that kind of put together, they published the Book of Commandments and and take care of some of the financial things. Yeah, there, there, a lot of these things, you know, they have, uh, usually these are men who have many hats. And so they, you know, the early records show that they were, the church was in debt. Okay. Because these, uh, these, this debt would be, of course, in, na in the names of these, uh, those who, um, you know, filled out paperwork and everything. We don't even have copies of all that even. Uh, but we know it from letters, we know it from uh, people selling lands and, and mm -hmm. uh, people meeting and trying to get, you know, contributions. Um, okay, so essentially we've piled up a bunch of debts and so they changed the church to the Church of the Latter-day Saints in 1834 to wipe away those debts, or how, how does that work? The easiest way to figure it out, because there's not that much paperwork, except that they did owe money, and so we know that it would take a strong reason to change the name of the church. And once you did that, you changed the location because the New York law says something about the first Tuesday in April. Mm -hmm. In fact, April 6, 1830 was a Tuesday where different towns would get together and select their you know, constables or overseers of the highway and everything else. So they would be meeting in their town and uh, there's no, absolutely no indication that there's any meeting in Fayette at all. There's no indication that any of the Whitmer family was in Manchester. So over a period of time, people have been looking for incorporation. It's not there. They've been trying to say that, well, the church is following that law. Well, there's no need to follow that law. It says in the Revelation and also in the Articles and Covenants of the church, the church was uh, organized and established on April 6, 1830. And one of them was, of course, a revelation given at Manchester, and the other one is the Articles and Covenants sustained in the first church conference in June. So early, the early stuff is what we're looking at. And over a period of time, people remember, yes, I saw those baptisms. 
And um, I guess if we didn't have that, we wouldn't have a lot of information, but we do have enough. Um, in fact, the, the manuscript history of the church, uh, on the other hand, even though it mentions Fayette, which is incorrect, it does mention other baptisms and probably the only record we have. So there probably was a list that was used to you know, help compose the manuscript history. Um, because a history kept by Oliver Cottery is, is non-extent, and John Whitmer doesn't start his uh, history that early. Hmm. Wow, it's getting really muddy. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our conversation with Michael Marquardt. In our next conversation, we'll try to get into the origins of priesthood. How was the church organized as early as 1830 with regards to priesthood? The authority that the, the early holders of the offices in the church would be that they were, they were called um, by the spirit or whatever. It was not this, you know, trying to Get, get back to the original apostles or, or ideas of who held the priesthood in the mm -hmm. New Testament or Book of Mormon times. Um, it's only after you have 12 ordained apostles. And that was 1835, right? Yes. Okay. We'll have a transcript out shortly on this conversation. And you can purchase individual copies at our website at gospeltangents.com shop. If you want to be the first to get a copy, please subscribe on our website for just $10 a month. I'll send it to you first as a PDF. Or if you'd like a physical copy for $15 a month, I'll be happy to send that to you as well. You can get our transcripts at our Amazon.com author page. I've got a link here, but just do a search for Gospel Tangents Interview and you should be able to find a bunch of them there. Please subscribe at Patreon.com slash Gospel Tangents. For $5 a month, you can hear the entire interview uncut. And for $10, you can get a PDF copy. We've also got a $15 tier where if you want a physical copy, I'll be the first to send it to you. So please subscribe at Patreon or on our website at GospelTangents.com as well. For our latest updates, please like our page at facebook.com slash gospel tangents. And also check our Twitter updates at, at gospel tangents as well. Please subscribe on our Apple Podcasts page at tinyurl.com slash gospel tangents. Or you can subscribe on your Android device. Uh, just do a search for gospel tangents. Thanks again for listening. Click here to subscribe, here for a transcript. And over here we've got some more of our great videos. Thanks again.